Infrastructure Secretary reveals approval still outstanding for airport expansion project. Central Government demands royalties from Spell before licenses can be granted. The government continues its investigations into finding the owner of the Gulfstream vessel and in sports. Tobago Cricket Association T20 tournament heats up. Good evening, I am Kristen Salandi. Welcome to the Tobago Updates television news for Monday, April 15th, 2024. Topping the news tonight. Approvals are still outstanding for constructing the new airport terminal of the ANR Robinson International Airport. A Freedom of Information request from a citizen revealed that the project manager NIDCO has yet to receive all the town, country and EMA approvals required by law for such construction while it continues. More in this story from Candice Jackson. While construction on the new airport terminal is ongoing, it is happening without some of the necessary approvals required by law. Results from a Freedom of Information request filed by a private citizen dated March 25, 2024 to the Division of Health, Wellness and Social Protection revealed that permits are still outstanding from the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Urban Development, the Water and Sewage Authority, WASA, and the Occupational Health and Safety Authority, OSHA, all required for Tonga Country approvals for the airport terminal construction. While the THA has been heavily criticized for going ahead with certain road construction works without prior Tonga country approvals, Secretary of Infrastructure Quarries and Urban Development Trevor James says despite being armed with this knowledge, the Executive Council is not fighting it. No, we took a decision, we took a decision at the executive level not to take any action to prevent the government in Trinidad from carrying out the mandate that they have to build the airport. James explained that oftentimes both the central government and the THA make decisions to proceed with developmental projects because of the tedious red tape involved in attaining the necessary approvals. Notwithstanding all the criticisms that we, we put in the public during the campaign, when we got into government, we decided, listen, we are not going to act against the airport because, you know, um, we have been starved for development in Tobago and the airport, as ill-placed as it is, um, will bring some level of, of, of betterment to be going to for with production. Currently, the THA's attempt to construct the Friendship Connector Road is facing a third injunction in court over necessary approvals. Despite the setback, James is confident that it will be adjudicated in the THA's favor and they will continue with the construction. However, he said that when compared to the billion-dollar airport terminal construction, the hypocrisy is glaring. The issue is not really that. The issue is the hypocrisy of PNM people who, who know, especially people who have been in office, who know that there is no town country approval and still criticize us when we do the same thing. Even though the Executive Council decided not to take action against the airport terminal construction, James pointed out that private citizens are free to take on the fight if they wish. Candace Jackson, Tobago Updates, Television News. A recent trade mission to Ghana revealed the potential for lucrative agreements for Studley Park Enterprises Limited spell, but a lack of licenses prevents talks from moving forward. Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and Urban Development Trevor James claims that the government is hindering spell from advancing its streams of revenue by denying it the necessary licenses to operate. Both the export license, the mining and blasting license, have not been forthcoming from the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of Trade. And, um, you know, I, I raised on another, on another media the, the, the issue of, of the audit of spell in, in, terms of, in terms of royalties and taxes that the Ministry of Energy is, is insisting that spell pay to the, to the ministry in order for them to give a blasting and a mining license. The audit revealed that Spell owes over $4 million in royalties for its operations prior to 2021. James says it is not a sum that the company will be able to pay at once. However, they are working out a payment plan with $1 million being paid this week. In the meantime, James is questioning the need to pay royalties to the government when the THA Act 40 of 1996 instructs all taxes to be paid in Tobago. Um, but but the, the critical issue for Tobago to think about 
is, is whether a minister in, and a minister in Trinidad should be demanding royalties from state lands in Tobago. That's the issue. The government has also mandated that materials mined in Studley Park should not be exported while there is a national need for them. However, James revealed that no government agency has requested any material from Studley Park over the past year. Meanwhile, he says Guyana remains interested in purchasing materials from Spell. According to former Commissioner of Police Gary Griffith, it was disrespectful of Chief Secretary Fali Augustine to be summoned to a meeting with the Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines. Following news of the meeting last Friday, Griffith said Hines should make it his duty to journey to Tobago every quarter and hold regular meetings with the THA and stakeholders. More in this report. Former Commissioner of Police Gary Griffith criticized National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines for disrespecting the THA by summoning the Chief Secretary to a meeting in Port of Spain last Friday. In a social media post, Griffith stated that it showed disrespect, laziness, ignorance and arrogance from the Keith Rowley-led government using a top-down approach to governance. He believes this approach hindered effective national security planning for the island. Griffith highlighted his practice as Minister of national security from 2013 to 2015 of regularly holding meetings in Tobago with then Chief Secretary of London and various national security arms and stakeholders. Consequently, Griffith doubted that a meeting between Hines and Augustine would yield any results in strengthening Tobago's security. During Friday's meeting, Augustine and Hines discussed various security matters, including updates on improvements to national security infrastructure, assets, and personnel. They also addressed the safety for fisher folk in Tobago, emphasizing the need for collaboration between fisher folk and the TNT Coast Guard. There was a commitment from the Coast Guard to enhance preventative and interdiction activities to bolster border security. Police Commissioner Ola Herewood Christopher was also present at the meeting and assured the continued deployment of resources, including increased patrols and technical air supports. Candace Jackson, Tobago Updates, Television News. Still to come, WASA begins cracking down on unauthorized activities, and later we have a sports report. Stay with us. Life is good with zero. Zero interest for six months. Zero down payments. Zero stress payment plan. That's right. With standards, my terms, we are putting the power of zero in your hands. Now, you can get that new sectional, fridge, stove, or TV for zero down. Pay zero interest later and enjoy a zero stress payment plan plus quick approval within 48 hours. Standards. Never beaten on quality and price. On Saturday, April 27th, the atmosphere in Black Rock Tobago will be filled with a sweet sound of jazz as Black Two Sugars and Starfish Tobago present Beach Front Jazz from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. A premium drinks inclusive event featuring Ace Bajan saxophonist Arturo Daffin and Band, Trinidad Top Jazz Ensemble, Alan Paulay with Vaughn and Bigfoot, Tobago songstress Kai DeVere, and just added veteran. Jazz guitarist Michael Boothman, pianist Hannah Goodrich, and new sensation Rose. Backed by the Beachfront Jazz Project, led by Emmy Fortune. Beachfront Jazz, all part of the Tobago Jazz and Music Weekend. Get your tickets now at Cache Port of Spain, Trin City, Eastgate, Gulf City Malls, and Trinidad, Lowlands Mall in Tobago, and Gen Care Day Spa, Woodbrook, and Tobago. Or call 681 1516 or 627 4141. Brought to you by B-Mobile, our telecommunications partner, RBC Royal Bank, Angostura Premium Rums, Hennessy, Johnny Walker Scotch, and the Prime Minister Sports and Culture Fund, Beachfront Jazz, April 27th, Black Rock Tobago. Dell Tech Distributors, best, best deal. deal, three pounds, for goat, chicken, turkey, beef, five meats, three pounds each, three hundred dollars, best, best deal. deal, or you could try, five pounds, for goat, chicken, turkey, beef, five meats, five pounds each, five hundred dollars, best, best deal. deal, twenty dollars delivery, call me now, three five nine five zero four zero or two three seven zero one zero two. order online at www.delltechdistributors.com or check with me, Mainwood, Agar, Tobago, Dell Tech Distributors, best, best deal. deal. 
feel. Tipsy presents Sip and Paint, an expression of a mother's love. Join us at the Tropicist Beach Hotel, Sunday, May 12th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Guests are entitled to finger foods and wine. Full package painted tickets only $600. And if you just want to hang out, we've got you. Limers pay $450. You'll be entertained by a special, sensational reggae artist, a live band, and come witness our bonfire. We've got loads of giveaways. We're catering to mom all evening. Sunday, May 12th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tropicus Beach Hotel. Come, sip and paint with Tipsy. Welcome back. With the island well into the recovery stage from this February 7th oil spill, many questions still need to be answered. During the 18th sitting of the House of Representatives in Parliament last Friday, the Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Stuart Young, was questioned about the oil spill's cleanup timeline and other operations surrounding the Gulf Stream vessel. Here is more. Minister Stuart Young explained that Heritage Petroleum Company Limited focused on shoreline cleanup in eight areas on the island from the Scarborough waterfront to the Thompson River, which included wildlife search, rescue and rehabilitation. He said given that most mobile or free oil in the areas assigned to Heritage Petroleum has been removed, the company has begun scaling down its on-site personnel and equipment. Minister Young shared that a joint assessment of the areas identified is underway and will outline a standard to determine the completeness of the cleanup activities. This is being done by a committee which includes representatives from the following. Timor, Ministry of Energy, the International Tankers Owners Pollution Federation Limited, Oil Spill Response Limited, and the All Fisher Folk Tobago Association. Minister Young said that site visits were conducted on the 28th and 29th of March with a guideline document expected to be finalized and presented this month, after which Heritage Petroleum will provide an estimated timeline for the end of the cleanup phase. Furthermore, he said that the ministry has retained TNT Salvage in a joint venture with QT Environmental Services and two American entities with international experience and experience to conduct survey and sampling activities the inventory of the capsized vehicle on water pollution management as well as refloating of the wreck as of April 8th 2024 survey and sampling activities have been completed and operations to de-inventory the vessel are underway he explained that these operations include breaching the double hull to access the vessel's cargo tank and setting up an onshore facility to offtake the vessel's remaining inventory. He said these two activities were expected to be completed on April 11, 2024. Following this, pumping the vessel's inventory will follow and is expected to take approximately 30 days. The latest estimates are that a total of 34,000 barrels is still on board. When asked about the vessel's owners, Minister Young stated that the matter continues to be pursued by the Ministry of Works and Transport, Maritime Division, and the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. Moreover, concerning the cost of the cleanup efforts, he could not provide a figure at the moment since it is an ongoing operation and expenses are being tabulated to be taken to the Cabinet. Ariana Scipio, Tobago Updates Television News. WASA is escalating its campaign against illegal water operations with plans to publicly shame offenders as authorities intensify efforts to curb unauthorized extraction and distribution of water. Travisia Phillips provides more details in this report. WASA is ramping up its crackdown on illegal water activities, announcing plans for a name and shame campaign against offenders. This initiative comes in response to the wide response problem of unauthorized water extraction and distribution, which has persisted despite existing fines of $750 outlined in the WASA Act. 
Recent arrests, such as that of a 30-year-old private water truck operator caught selling water without proper authorization, underscore the urgency of addressing this issue. Efforts to combat illegal water operations are not limited to punitive measures. Proposed amendments to the WASA Act are set to bolster penalties for tampering with water infrastructure. The authority is also contemplating civil action against individuals profiting from illicit water trade, underscoring the necessity for comprehensive measures to curb such activities. Reflecting on past scams, particularly in Mon Diablo, highlights the problem's intricate nature and insider's involvement, necessitating a multifaceted approach to safeguarding water resources. As WASA continues its efforts to combat illegal water activities, the overarching goal remains to protect public health and ensure the sustainable management of water resources. The authorities resolved to address this issue reflects a commitment to upholding standards of integrity and accountability in the management of essential services. Trevisa Phillips, Tobago Updates, Television News. MP for Faisabad and Shadow, Minister of Health, Dr. Lakram Bodo, during an opposition press conference yesterday, addressed the deaths of seven babies at the neonatal intensive care unit, NICU, at the Port of Spain General Hospital. Dr. Bodo called for Terence Dial Singh to step down from his position as Minister of Health. Ariana Scipio has the details. Last week, it was reported that seven babies, all under 32 weeks, died at the Port of Spain General Hospital at the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit between April 2nd and April 9th due to sepsis. Dr. Lakram Bodo stated that if Minister Dial Singh believed in his words in Parliament when he declared in 2016 that he was personally responsible for the improvements in neonatal mortality, then he has to take personal responsibility for the tragedy. It's only fair, ladies and gentlemen. So in the circumstances, he may want to consider doing the honorable thing um, to resign. Dr. Bodo noted Minister Dial Singh's statement in Parliament last Friday concerning the tragedy, which echoed the NWRHA statement in which they assured the public that an investigation would be launched under the supervision of the Chief Medical Officer. However, Dr. Bodo said while the UNC welcomes the investigation, it should be done promptly. We don't want this urgent matter to be swept under the carpet, so we're asking for a very timely report on this. This report must clearly outline the steps to limit and prevent recurrence. <coughs> and this report must restore faith and trust in the population. Dr. Bodo noted that the report must identify all the shortfalls and preventative measures and hold persons accountable. He also highlighted that a class action lawsuit is being filed against the NWRHA on behalf of the aggrieved parents. This will cost the taxpayers millions of dollars if the NWRHA is found negligent in this matter. I am saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that this money could have been better spent on providing the additional resources for hard-working healthcare staff to better meet the many other needs of the citizens in the healthcare sector. Meanwhile, UNC Senator Wade Mark joined the call for the Minister of Health to step down. He added that for the investigation into the baby's deaths to be impartial, the Prime Minister must remove Minister Dial Singh from his position and allow an independent investigation to be conducted. Ariana Scipio, Tobago Updates Television News. You're watching the Tobago Updates Television News. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at Tobago Updates. Our sports report is up next. You're the prize, you're the queen.
Lux Cafe, the buffet restaurant that specializes in all your tasty local dishes for breakfast and for lunch. Breakfast includes coconut bake and sada roti served with chokers, bulge oil and sausages in tomato sauce. Not forgetting beef and cheese pies, shepherd's pie, macaroni pie and rice in various styles. Meats served in a variety of flavors, garden salads and pasta salads. All this accompanied by fruit juices, coconut water, your choice of a great combination to appease your taste buds. So call us today to order as we are here to accommodate your busy schedules or if you are having a cooking day off. It's gonna go They better look up and look Cause this is your show And everybody's gonna know Say it to them once again This is your show more, live more Thanks for staying with us after a few disappointing matches, 1976 FC Phoenix walked away with a much-needed victory in this weekend's clash against the Heritage Petroleum Civic Center in Tier 1 of the Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League. In what was a crucial game, 1976 FC Phoenix won 2-0, earning much-needed points to take them forward in the tournament. Marcus Daniel has the highlights. 1976 FC Phoenix Football Club clinched a crucial victory against Heritage Petroleum Point 14 Civic Center, propelling them to seventh place on the Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League Tier 1 table. In a display of determination at the Dwight York Stadium, Adriel George ignited the crowd with a powerful strike from close range in the 25th minute. The momentum continued as Mikhail Jem Gordon notched his eighth goal of the season from the penalty spot. Securing a 2 0 win after is, being fouled yes in the 82nd minute. A Vince victory marks Phoenix's seventh win of the season out of 16 games played, elevating their points tally to 22. The league is now on a hiatus for the first Citizens Knockout Cup, slated to commence on April 20th. Phoenix will face Eagles FC in a highly anticipated clash with both teams aiming to advance in the tournament. Eagles FC is currently positioned 10th on the Tier 1 table with 19 points. All 26 TTPFL teams comprising 11 Tier 1 and 15 Tier 2 teams will participate in the tournament. The top three teams from both tiers will enjoy a bye in the preliminary round, advancing directly to the round of 16, scheduled for the weekend of April 27th. Marcus Daniel, Tobago Update Sports. Javon Williams. In more football news, community teams continue to battle it out in the Moriah Community Builders Village Football League. It is quickly becoming a platform for a showcase of footballers in communities who are not attached to any clubs. Marcus Daniel has the highlights from recent games in this report. Action continued over the weekend in the Moriah Community Builders Village Football League. Tobago select manager a narrow 2 1 victory over host Mariah Allsons with goals from Jeremiah King. <laughs> and Samuel Solomon. <laughs> While Mariah Allsons' lone goal came from Kellen Alexander. The action continued as Patience Hill secured a hard fought one nil victory against the Lions FC with Miguel George netting the crucial goal. Meanwhile, Eagles FC sought to victory against Castara in a thrilling encounter 
ending 4 3 in favor of Eagles. Keanu Boswin broke the deadlock in the 26 minutes, running on to a lovely true ball. Omar Daniel made it 2 0 just before the break. Ikeem Charles to pull the goal back early in the second half. Good to see a defensive error. <laughs> Kiel Taylor tied things up at two apiece before Joshua Roberts curled the Castara into the lead with his sublime free kick. <laughs> wouldn't die though. Instead, they raised their game and found an equalizer through Zion McCool, albeit with some assistance from the goalie, then scored the winner with Jaim Trim finding the net. The weekend continued with finishers plus battling Colonel Hall to a two-all draw. Akil Holford and Marcus Aston scored for finishers plus, while Karim Tobias struck twice for Colonel Hall. In the final match of the weekend, Mariah All-Stars showcased their resilience in a thrilling 3-all draw against Miller Youth. Mariah All-Stars goal came from Kellen Alexander, Akidon Williams via the penalty and Akeem Legal, while Miller Youth responded with an own goal by Akidon Williams as well as goals from Kishon McKetney and Jafia Edward. The action continues tomorrow with matches at 5.30pm and 7.30pm. Marcus Daniel, Tobago Update Sports. And that's how we end our sports segment. More news coming up after this. Scrub Tide brings to you our organic fat dissolving shots. Yes, guys, our lemon butter shot breaks down stubborn fat, tightens any loose skin while increasing your metabolism. No side effects, no downtime. We also offer cavitation, cellulite treatment, but breast, hip dip fillers, weight loss, fertility IVs, and much more. Contact us on 495-6624 or follow us on Instagram at Scrub Ties Buddy Contouring. Tobago Glass Supplies has been a leading name for over 37 years in the glass and aluminum market in Tobago. We provide an extensive range of high quality innovative aluminum and glass products for commercial and residential use. Competitive prices with superior and professional services by committed employees who are guided by rigid quality standards. Tobago Glass Supplies specializes in the manufacture and installation of glass and aluminum products products that are essential to today's homeowners and the business environment. We are engaged in marketing, sales and installation of a variety of products. These ranges from windows and doors to necessities such as mirrors for homes and vehicles, designed and manufactured in-house or imported. Thanks for staying with us. In a recent interview with Tobago Updates, Desley Percy, father of Jembro Percy, shared the harrowing experience of his son being left behind during a trip to the UK with the Jarrick Titans Sport and Development Club. Percy recounted the events leading up to his son's unexpected predicament, shedding light on the chaotic and disorganized atmosphere at the airport before departure. Travisia Phillips has more. 
Percy described a moment of concern when his wife raised questions about the handling of the children's passports, only to be dismissed with promises of addressing the issue later. However, this promise went unfulfilled. I even remembered his mom asking one of the, the parents, you know, like, who's going to take control of the children's passport? And an ex-parent responded and saying, oh, we don't have time for this now. We deal with that upstairs, you know, in the departure area. That never took place, though, you know. He then remembered being informed that there were two separate lists for travel on different days. However, to his dismay, when his son arrived, officials stated that Jabru's name was not on the scheduled travel list, despite him possessing a valid ticket. He then explained how his son got the opportunity to go on the trip. The Jarek Titans would have invited two other clubs mm -hmm. to, to join them. So when they go to the UK, they would be prepared to you know, participate in the tournaments because he did not have enough players initially you know, to go to the UK. So, everything was sent to his organization. This you know, is Jerry Titan. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, every player and person that was interested to go to the trip would have been putting money directly into the account of Jarek Titans. Regarding the missing passports, he said his son told him exactly what took place. He said, Dad, this trip is a long trip. You know, I went to the store to purchase some snacks mm -hmm. he he made sure he told me i had my passport in one hand and the bag with the snacks in another hand mm -hmm. he returned to where the group of players were mm -hmm. you know and he said all right he's gonna put his snacks in his bag so he rest his passport right there he bent down put in his snacks in his bag when he got back up passports not there Despite seeking assistance from older group members, including Mr. Brown, who was preoccupied with another passport issue, Jabru's concerns were not adequately addressed. One of the problems he would have encountered was that some of the people that were on this trip, they were impatient. Mm -hmm. So they started suggesting that my son was playing and he lost his passport. Mm -hmm. right? so, so, so Mr. Brown did not take his time to go to my son and say like, what had happened? What took place? Percy lamented the lack of accountability and swift action in addressing the passport incident, emphasizing that his son's plight was dismissed as mere carelessness. Furthermore, Percy highlighted the absence of any investigation or questioning regarding the missing documents, which miraculously resurfaced in Tobago along with Jabru's boarding pass, leaving many questions unanswered about its journey. The Percy family received a call two hours after the flight landed in Tobago from the Jarek Titans president, revealing that a 15-year-old child had the passport in their possession. Travisio Phillips, Tobago Updates Television News. After a year, Commissioner of Police Erla Harewood Christopher's contract is coming to an end. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Commission has started advertising for the position of Commissioner of Police, noting all the requirements needed for the job, including a master's degree in law, criminal justice, criminology, police service management, or any other related degree, and 15 years of experience in law enforcement. Herewood Christopher was appointed as COP on the 7th of December 2022, being officially sworn in on February 2nd, 2023. She is the first she is the country's first female commissioner of police. Since she since she turned 60 in 2023, she was legally required to resign from her position. Now for the weather update from the TNT Met office. Tonight's weather is expected to be generally fair, though a few overnight to early morning showers may occur. Temperatures will drop to 25 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow, look for, look for predominantly sunny skies with slight haziness and breezy conditions, though there may be one or two brief isolated showers. Winds could gust at times, particularly near showers. A mild concentration of Saharan dust is in the atmosphere. The temperature is expected to reach 32 degrees Celsius with a heat index of 37 degrees. Seas will be moderately rough with waves up to 2.2 meters in open waters and around 1 meter, occasionally choppy in sheltered areas. Sunrise is at 5.50 and sunset is at 6.14. 
And that's how we end this evening's newscast. Here's a recap of the headlines before we go. Infrastructure Secretary reveals approvals still outstanding for airport expansion project. Central Government demands royalties from Spell before licenses can be granted. The government continues its investigations into finding the owner of the Gulfstream vessel and in sports, Tobago Cricket Association T20 tournament heats up. I am Kristen Zalandi. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great night.